weather on Earth is an extremely complicated and unique thing, with some locations experiencing sunny skies and pleasant weather, and other places experiencing torrential rainstorms, violent wind, and temperatures that make you want to stay within the comfort of your own home. However, Earth is not the only place that experiences weather. Other planets in our solar system have weather as well, and in some cases, the storms and temperatures involved are extreme beyond anything that's even remotely imaginable on our blue marble. But before we get into what the weather looks like out of this world, I would appreciate if you would like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell to stay tuned for future content. Okay, so let's start with the innermost planet for the Sun, Mercury. This planet is notable because it is the only planet in the entire solar system to completely lack an atmosphere. As a result, things like wind and clouds are completely non-existent. That's not to say that this planet doesn't have anything interesting, however. Thanks in parts of the lack of an atmosphere, the planet experiences rather extreme variations in temperature from day to night, which, as a side note, is a full 60 Earth days long on Mercury. During the day, the planet can get up to a scorching 800 degrees Fahrenheit, or 426 degrees Celsius, while the nighttime side plunges to negative 275 degrees Fahrenheit, or negative 170 degrees Celsius. The reason the swings are this huge is because the lack of an atmosphere means that any heat Mercury receives during the day is not absorbed to heat up its nighttime side as well. Overall, Mercury's average temperature is about 330 degrees Fahrenheit, or 165 degrees Celsius, which is still above the boiling point of water, but not enough to claim the title of hottest planet. That title goes to Venus, which despite being twice as far from the sun, clocks in at a boiling of 860 degrees Fahrenheit, or 460 degrees Celsius. How is this possible? Well, it all boils down to Venus's atmosphere. Remember carbon dioxide, the greenhouse gas that is the primary contributor to climate change on Earth? Well, while Earth's atmosphere is about 0.04% CO2. Venus's atmosphere is 96% CO2 in an atmosphere about twice as thick as Earth's. Naturally, pretty much all the heat from the sun is trapped in the atmosphere, and the results of, in the scorching high temperatures being transferred into the nighttime as well. One side effect of this is that Venus's clouds are extremely thick, so an observer on Venus will pretty much never see the sun. Additionally, the pressure on Venus is 93 times higher than on Earth at sea level, which is enough to crush anyone without a very rigid and heat-proof spacesuit. Higher up in the atmosphere, about 30 miles above the surface, there is a region where temperatures and pressures are much lower, which has led to the idea of creating floating cities in the Venusian clouds. However, any sellers will have to deal with sulfuric acid rainstorms that are just as lethal to anyone exposed. Moving on to Mars, which has, in my opinion, probably the most interesting weather anywhere that's not on Earth. To start, Mars is about 40% further from the sun than Earth, and has an atmosphere that is much thinner. This expectedly leads to cooler temperatures on average, but in most cases, it's not much colder than some of the extremes that we see in places like Antarctica or Mount Everest, especially on the sunlit side. Mars also has seasons similar to that of Earth, thanks in large parts to its near-identical axle tilt of 23 degrees. Expectedly, these seasons last much longer due to Mars's 686-day orbit compared to Earth's 365, so approximately six months on average. Temperatures also get colder as one approaches the poles on Mars, and that the poles themselves are huge ice caps that are eerily reminiscent of what we see on Earth. If all the factors align, an observer on the Martian equator may briefly experience its temperatures as high as 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 21 degrees Celsius on a warm summer day but a cold winter night at the poles can drop as low as negative 220 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 140 degrees Celsius. One more interesting tidbit. Since Mars does have an atmosphere, wind exists as well, and this very frequently results in dust storms that sweep across the landscape. On rare occasions, dust storms can cover the entire planet for weeks or even months at a time, with everything but the highest mountaintops obscured from space. Overall, the Martian climate is easily the least inhospitable of any planet outside of Earth, but the thin, carbon dioxide-rich atmosphere and the very cold temperatures will make it a challenge for any colonizers in the future. Now, at long last, we have the gas and ice giant planets, which are all pretty similar in terms of the weather they experience. This largely boils down to the fact that they are all large planets with massive atmospheres that are extremely far from the Sun. However, there are still some things to point out about each planet. Jupiter is famous for its Great Red Spot, a hurricane that is three Earths in diameter and that has been spinning since at least the 1600s. 
It also has bands of storms and clouds that stretch across its circumference, with each band having very different colors and many housing their own violent hurricanes within. Jupiter also has massive auroras near its poles, a side effect of the powerful magnetic field it possesses. Saturn is a tamer planet in general, but the most interesting letter related tidbit it has is a gigantic hexagonal vortex on its north pole, an anomaly that we still have yet to find a cause of. Uranus is the coldest planet in the solar system, coming in at an absolutely bone chilling negative 370 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 220 degrees Celsius. Neptune is slightly warmer on account of it having a more methane rich atmosphere and a darker color in general. But don't be fooled, this difference is only on the order of a handful of degrees, and it makes up for this relative heat wave with the fiercest winds in the solar system. Winds on this lonely world can clock in at over 2,000 miles per hour, or 3,200 kilometers per hour. So yeah, hopefully this video made you feel better about that dreary, rainy day you might experience every now and then, because while it might be miserable, at least it doesn't kill you the moment you step outside. As always, I would appreciate you would like the video, subscribe to your channel, and hit the notification bell to stay tuned for future content. Thanks and have a great day.